Welcome back to another installment of the Dollar Bells. Today's episode is... Uh, what is that smell? Oh, that? I found a recipe online how to make my own compost. The crew's are gonna grow their own vegetables out there. Pretty cool. Good to know. So obviously that means this episode is about growing your own garden and what that means to you financially. Like any good researchers, we'll start with the why. It saves you money. Growing a garden has the potential to save you hundreds on your grocery budget. But this potential depends on the cost involved in growing your crops, so do your homework. Or you could end up with some really pricey tomatoes. According to PennyHoarder.com, an average sized garden could create a cornucopia of savings, up to $500 a year in groceries. That's what we call a return on investment. So what's an average sized garden? According to the National Gardeners Association, the average sized garden is about 600 square feet in the US. Yep, but you don't necessarily need that much space. You can have a smaller garden and plant high yield crops like tomatoes, onions, and leaf lettuce. Less efficient crops include Brussels sprouts, celery, and pumpkins. But if you love them, you don't have to skip them. Don't forget about your vertical space too. You can use posts and fencing to allow climbing plants. Popular ones include pole beans, tomatoes, and snow peas. Also, you may not have to tear up your backyard to plant a garden. Lots of people grow food in containers on their deck, patio, and even community garden. I wouldn't recommend planting pumpkins in your apartment balcony's flower box, however. Oof. Keep a record. Don't forget to take notes when you garden. Planning is essential. Tracking what did or didn't work when you planted and how much you harvested will make you smarter and help you decide what you plant from year to year. You also get to grow the stuff you love to eat. What you got there, Bailey? Eggplant. I love eggplant. There's eggplant parmesan, eggplant frittata, stuffed eggplant, fried eggplant. <clears throat> Bailey. And remember, depending on where you live, some crops do better than others. The Midwest has an assortment of vegetables that do well. Everything from tomatoes, peas, beans, onions, sweet peppers, and my favorite, ugh, you already know my favorite. To get a head start, if you have the time and space, you can start the seeds indoors in the late spring. Seeds are a great idea. Because seed packets come with way more seeds than you need to plant, you could set up an exchange in the neighborhood. True. But check this out. Last time I went to the store, tomatoes on the vine were $2.29 per pound. A six pack of tomato plants cost $5 and could yield up to 25 pounds of tomatoes per plant. Let's not forget about the herbs. If you look at what you normally purchase at the grocery store, you'll probably find that you spend at least $20 on fresh herbs. Spend that money on herb plants like basil, rosemary, and thyme, and you'll have fresh herbs all summer long and fresh tastes better than dried. While saving money can be one of the main benefits of growing a garden, there are also the benefits of relaxation, a little fitness, and the satisfaction that you're eating and spending smarter. So Bailey, any last advice we should tell our viewers? Remember to start small. Like many things, gardening takes practice. Limit yourself to just a few types of vegetables the first year. And when you become more confident in your abilities, you can increase the size of your garden. Hey! That sounds a lot like investing. Pick your market, fertilize it, and watch it grow. Look at us being all relevant and stuff. I know! Well, thanks for watching this week's version of the Dollar Beats. Bells. Bells. Later, potato.